Um, okay, so how can you avoid it being muddy? You can make a uh, choice of fingering that necessitates you're going to be percussive in touch. This is counterintuitive to what you might do from a classical uh, perspective where you use consecutive fingers for consecutive notes. In Boogie Woogie, for instance, when I did this pattern, the A and the G, as a classical pianist, when I first approached that, I, I'm wanting to play G with the two and the thumb on the A. But what happens when I speed that up to a faster tempo, I end up with a legato connection between those two notes that I don't want. So what, what was very beneficial is to see some actual players uh, reveal to me that they're doing a thumb-thumb movement. And that will help avoid muddiness. So you want to be careful about how you choose fingerings. And if you choose fingerings through the paradigm of thought that your, your left hand is playing a percussive role, then I think you'll come up with better solutions and you'll, you'll, you'll more likely avoid muddiness. It's something you have to work on uh, and listen for. But a lot of it can be solved with uh, good fingering choices. Good question. I've never had that question before. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was also thinking in terms of the, in, the too close an interval down in the bass, you know, just uh, sometimes discouraged. Okay. Well, I think the closest interval that... Uh, At the same time as a chord. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know, some patterns, uh, there are some patterns that are harder than others, and it's a, it's a good idea to find a few patterns that work best for you and make those a part of your permanent vocabulary. There are some patterns that, that I particularly find uh, either too hard or too taxing uh, that, I don't, uh, that I, I don't keep as a part of my vocabulary because they're the kinds of things where I've hurt my fingers on them before. It's like, you know, there's other ones that sound just as great or can imitate the sound of, of that one you might like. So it may mean leaving out a note. Now the distance though, when I, when, when I do chords, I think here's another point I can convey to you, is that you're not really playing these keys in the way that you play left hand uh, with a lot of dexterity and technique in classical piano. So I'm not playing uh, on the tips of my fingers with curved fingers. I'm instead trying to uh, put a lot of the energy of my playing into the wrist and the arm weight. So what I'm doing uh, happens a lot with uh, uh, kind of a, a bounce or a flop of the hand. So when I do these, I, I don't have a tensed, a, a tensed hand. But really once you tense up, that gripping technique will, will cause a more legato effect to come out. And what it will also do is that once you grip and elongate a beat for too long, you're not gonna get to the next one in time, the rhythm falls apart, there's a mistake, the whole thing goes to pot. All right. So you, you want to be percussive, but you also want to be, you can achieve a great and full sound uh, through arm weight. You don't need to have a big uh, exertion going on. So when I play. You see what I'm doing? I, I'm not playing the thumb here. My callus on my thumb is down here. Because that way I can play from the elbow. And it's very similar to the concept, of course, this is in classical training. You play into the piano, you follow through the attack. A lot of this happens in your, you follow through the pinky here. This follow through idea is a phenomenon that you hear in many physical endeavors. You hear in the martial arts, the sports, and you probably have had a coach tell you to swing a bat, follow through, or a golf swing, follow through. It's a follow through concept, basically. You play the piano more uh, 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 with a diagonal in attack and not a uh, down and gripping attack. Um, good question. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions? With that piece you just played called uh Beethoven's Boogie Woogie Sonata. <laughs> <laughs>